Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone to Holy Cross Faith Memorial. I'm Rick German, your virtual usher for this 17th Sunday after Pentecost. I want to wish everyone happy fall. And as Father Will always says, you are welcome here and you honor us with your presence. Hope you enjoy the service. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be 
Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you declare your almighty power, chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first lesson is from the book of Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent, as well as the life of the child, is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed, and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life. Because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed, they shall surely live. They shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, The way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel. All of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions. Otherwise iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me. And get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn, then, and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 25 in unison. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. 
and you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. The second letter is from Paul's letter to the Philippians. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every name should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said to the same, and he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Authority issues 
Have you ever known anyone with authority issues? Well, that's the theme running throughout today's gospel. The chief priests and the elders take issue with Jesus' authority. The two sons challenge their father's authority. And they're not the only ones with authority issues. And yes, I'm talking about you. I'm also talking about me. We all have authority issues, but I'm talking about a little something a little different here. In our usual understanding of authority issues, the obvious question in today's gospel is whether we recognize and submit to the authority of Jesus and the Father. But look, that question is so obvious that I have to wonder if it's really not the question at the heart of today's gospel. I mean, it's so obvious that I think that there has to be something else going on. And to jump on that question as the obvious and only question to be answered only reveals our misunderstanding of what true authority is. More often than not, we are confused about authority. We misunderstand it to be based on credentials and expertise, a thick resume, years of education, successes and accomplishments, status and reputation, or the position held in relationship to another. We assume that authority comes from outside a person and that it is given them by their circumstance. In this understanding, some have authority and others do not. Who do you think you are? What gives you the right to tell me what to do or to use a phrase from my childhood, you're not the boss of me? That represents our usual way of understanding authority issues. We don't like someone else teaching us or correcting us or telling us what to do. We hear that in the challenge of the chief priests and the elders to Jesus. By what authority are you doing these things and who gave you this authority? We see it in the refusal of the two sons to go to the vineyard. There is, however, another authority issue at play in today's gospel. And that issue is our own failure and sometimes our refusal to recognize, claim, and exercise the authority within us to actually go to the vineyard. That's the authority issue I believe this gospel is holding for us today. Folks, if you think God is the boss of you, you've misunderstood authority. Let go of that idea. God's not the boss of you, and God's not the boss of me. God's not the boss of us. God is our author every day. God authorizes us to enter and sends us into his vineyard to act in this world with God's authority and on God's behalf throughout the gifts that God has bestowed upon each of us. True authority always comes from within. It is an interior God-given quality, not an exterior circumstance. I think that's why Jesus was always so aggravated with the religious leaders they chose to exchange their God-given authority for human power. And sometimes we do too. That's what's happening in much of our world today. In the absence of true authority, there will always be power struggles. Look at our political system. Look at the wars throughout the world. Look at the conflicts in your own relationships. Those are about power, not authority. Our leaders exercise power, but very few exercise authority. In the exercise of power, we look to our own interests. But in the exercise of authority, we look to the interests of others. Think about the people who hold authority for you. They're not concerned about themselves. They don't dominate or control you. They inspire you. They call forth from you faith, hope, and trust. They expand your world and open new possibilities and bring forth life and gifts in yourself that you never knew were there. It calls you to reevaluate your life, change your mind, and live differently. That sounds an awful lot like Jesus, and it's very different from the authorities who exercise power. I will always and remember, I will always remember and, and give thanks for the authority of Father Alan Houghton, a former priest here and someone that I loved very much. A number of years ago, I presided over his funeral 
honestly believing that I was at least one of the most important people in his life. And when I got there, I realized that everyone there thought the same thing about themselves. That was not manipulation on Alan's part. It was his authority, his listening, his silence, his presence and wisdom were not just his personality traits. They were the divine attributes in his life, gifts God had bestowed upon him. And this created space and place for me and others that invited us to discover our own authority that showed us the way to the vineyard of our lives. There are people in this parish who have no leadership position, title, or theological credentials, and yet they have such great authority. I see it in their compassion and gentleness. I hear it in the way that they pray. I feel it in their love for me and for others. They too show me the way to the vineyard of my life. That's what authorities do, but it's not about them. It doesn't come from them. All authority originates in God, but it is not exclusive to God. God shares God's authority with us. The authority God shares with us is nothing less than his own divine attributes. It is the expression and manifestation of God's life in and through our own lives. That shared authority exists in us and is revealed by us as the many and varied gifts that God has imparted on each of our lives. That means every one of us has authority. Look, as your priest, I do not have more authority than you. I just, I do not have better authority than you. I just have a different authority. God gives us each gifts and authority unique to our own lives. God is generous, extravagant with the gifts that he gives and the authority that he shares. And my sisters and brothers, we all have God-given gifts and authority. In fact, there is no one without authority. The difference is that some recognize and exercise their authority and others do not. Regardless, God knows and sees the authority he's given us and waits for us to see and to know it too. And when we do, we change our mind and we go to the vineyard. We have begun our stewardship season along with the fall pledge drive. So let me take a moment to push you just a little bit more on your authority issues, okay? What is the authority God has given you? What gifts, what divine attributes has God bestowed upon you, giving you stewardship over? Are you living from that authority and sharing those gifts? Have you gone to his vineyard? Or are you simply mouthing the answers that you think God wants to hear? Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. of the people are form three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, and that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Will and Ryan, our clergy, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for Donald, our president, Henry, our governor, Tom, our congressman, and Tim and Lindsay, our senators, and all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will, especially in the Verger ministry and in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, especially for the birthdays of Jerry Wilson, Bill Bailey, Esther Ackner, and Julia Cripps and for the wedding anniversary of Angelo and Catherine Stripto, Andy and Rachel Kunz, and Jason and Anna Leslie. Today we offer our prayers for parish members, Jim McBride, Ira Thomas, Katie Harris, Aaron Ulfelder, Bonnie Lee Decker, Libby Lundville, Marcia Kaminsky, Diana Farrell, Roger Proser, Rita Schreier and family, Lauren Belt, Elizabeth Dumphy, Lynn Van Eck, Shirley Besselou, Sue Myers, Helen Thomas, and Mary Barandi. For friends of this parish who are sick or suffering, especially Marge, Ava, Nancy, Tallou, Earl, Olivia, Taylor, Zach, John, Dennis, Jerry, and Kay. For those serving in the armed forces, and for others who protect us at home and abroad, especially Midway Fire Rescue. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we remember commission on ministry of the Diocese of South Carolina. Have compassion on all those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. And give to the departed, especially Betty Godley and Patricia Thomas, eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. O merciful Creator, your hand is open wide to satisfy the needs of every living creature. Make us always thankful for your loving providence and grant that we, remembering the account that we must one day give, may be faithful stewards of your good gifts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor.
most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I invite you at home to share a sign of peace with members of your own household or by sending a text or an email to a friend. Be of the same mind, brothers and sisters, having the same love, the same selflessness, and the same humility as Christ Jesus, who is at work in you, enabling you for the glory of God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and right a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. 
Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For through your Son, Jesus Christ, we share in the Holy Spirit and are made to be a community of love in your name. By your calling and encouragement, we have become your servants and your children, and our joy is complete in the unity of this holy fellowship with you and one another. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah.